So, uh, I'm sitting down there in my new hometown, uh, the City of Champions. You might have heard of it. Chicago, Illinois. Boo! So I'm sitting there with my yeah. new friend. They're our rivals. Says, you might know him as Vince Vaughn, but I don't call that to his face. Boo! I say Vince Vaughn. So, so what do you have in mind for my new role in your upcoming sequel to The Cell? <laughs> and before he goes on, the Don't Black Harry Rings, and you'll never guess who it was. What? My friend Daniel McCabe, he goes, hey, you know what, buddy? I've got a super show coming up, and uh, I'd like to be part of it. And I go, Dan, you know what for you? No. Oh, uh, no. J-Lo, J-Lo in the cell, come on. <laughs> and he goes, before come you on. say no, let me tell you who your opponent is. Who is Pull it? Crazy. Oh, boy! Oh, crazy. Who wow. crazy makes me crazy. He's been ducking me since the moment I saw him. Oh, shit. So I said, you know what, Vince? Vince, you take your ticket to game six. You can hold on to it. I gotta get back to my helicopter. Oh, yeah. I bought a helicopter after my match with Zeus to fly. It was pretty fun cool. <laughs> oh! I get back to my helicopter. I land back here two hours ago. And what do I find out? Cole Crazy injures himself the week before the match. Aww. He comes up to Canada a couple months ago, gets aged from one of our ring rats. Oh! But whether I come to Washington, whether you come to Canada, whether we go to Australia, I will find you. I will find you. This is not over. You watch what I'll do to Dr. Rump tonight. Punches. Oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh. 
breaths. Yes. Yes. What? What? Three. He's got a belly full of chicken. Oh. Uh. Hang out. Oh. Uh. Hang out. Oh. 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 I sucks dicks fans, it's Dream Slam 2, day 2, you may notice, I'm not wearing a tie, I'm not wearing my glasses, because I'm not here to tell you about the matches, I'm here to fucking fight, because I'm here representing the honor and the pride of I sucks dicks, myself, Daniel Makabe, this man, Yaks J, and a third guy, we'll get to him later, we're here to defend I sucks dicks, you got guys coming, Siege, you saw what he did to me yesterday, don't think I forgot that. It was less than 24 hours ago. My memory may be, huh, but it's not that bad. Cage of death. Cage not included. The first one ever in I Suck Six. Maybe the first one ever in backyard history. You've got your tournament of hates, and you've got, you know, your SOSs. I Sucks Dicks are, not only do we bring the best wrestling, we're going to bring you the best death matches as well. And it's going to be courtesy of us and our third guy. Let me, let me just tell you a few things about our third guy. I mean... There is a guy, there's no one made more for this type of match. I sucks dicks, resident deathmatch worker, you could say. This guy, I've had fights with this guy, you've had fights with this guy. He's, he's a tough son of a bitch, that's for sure. Team, uh, see, who knows who his teammates are? I don't even know if he has anyone that likes him. He can round up a team, he can do what he wants to do, but we've got a team that's going to go for the win, and we're going to do so tonight. You ready for this? Built for war, baby. Built for war. We're gonna go to war tonight. Hey, how's it going, man? What's up, man? Uh, wow, ready to do this? I'm ready. Looks like we got a team TOH going on here. So um, we got a death match. Yeah, we got a death match, and uh, we're a man down at the moment, but uh. Two Team TOH guys and right. the I Suck Sticks guys. I don't even know who they'll have. There's yeah, not there's much on the roster there. No, there's not much to pick from. But there's the one guy they have. There is the one guy. And he has been to a TOH. Oh. Team TOH? So we got a team. A team TOH? I, I like we'll it. Be, I like it. I think we'll be just fine. Don't worry about Team TOH. <laughs>
At this point, young Rusty re-entered the ring alongside his comrade, hoisting Daniel Macabre up into a double press slam-like maneuver, attempting a stun gun across the barbed wire. However, Macabre fought off this heinous act, only to be tossed backwards from the double press, back first through a barbed wire table in the corner. <laughs> Luckily, at this very moment, the music plays, signifying the next entrant. And it was none other than the very large and the very powerful Yakuza J. Oh, he entered the ring and cleaned house, for a lack of a better term, on both his team TOH opponents. This allowed Daniel Makabe the rest he needed to recover, and the two I sucks dicks members each grabbed an opponent and raked their faces ever so violently across the barbed wire. Suddenly, from the distance, Ramsey's God of War by heavy metal supergroup Nile could be heard. And no sooner did we hear that one Zeus McFly came bursting through the pink camouflage curtain in all his glory. Oh. <clears throat> Due to the random entrant order of the match, it is in fact unclear as to which team's aid Zeus would be coming, as he is both, of course, a member of I Sucks Dicks, but has also participated in a tournament of hate in Australia, which, as we all know, is a uh, land for common criminals. But his allegiance became all too clear when he entered the ring, faced the crowd in camera, removed his homeless person's garb, revealing T.O.H. stenciled across his chest, bit into the sweet flesh of a fluorescent bulb, carved that same chest with the broken, jagged head of the bulb, and proceeded to punch Daniel Bacabe and Yakuza J squarely in the jaw. The assault continued with McFly, both attacking Daniel Bacabe with a coat hanger, pulling up with a devilish brain buster on an open steel chair in Yakuza J. When both Daniel Macabe and Yakuza J arose next, their faces were covered with a proverbial crimson mask. Riveting. Riveting. Oh. At this point, things looked dire for Team I Sucks Dicks, but it was a time for the final member of the team to make his appearance, and for that we go to the back! Siege, you motherfucker! I got no love for those two guys in the ring right now, but you do not come to my bed and pull that kind of shit. And Zeus McFly, you fucking turncoat, you are a man without a country now, my friend. And Rusty, don't think I forgot about last week with you and Brent pulling the shit you did on me. I didn't want to do it, but I gotta do it. I am member number three of Team I Sucks Dicks in Cage of Death, Cage Not Included. So young Scott Henson enters, despite his well-documented disdain for both of his teammates wielding a steel chair. Striking first Rusty, then McFly, then recklessly throwing it at Siege. This allowed Yakuza J time to recover, as he and Henson hit a combination choke slam backdrop driver on Zeus McFly. Henson and Yakuza attempted a second double-team maneuver, this time the KRS-1 on Rusty. Rusty was able to escape over the top rope to the floor, only to be met with a strike from the murder board by Daniel McCarvey. On the ground now, Rusty was a victim to a second strike with the fiendish weapon to his back. To add insult to injury at this point, McCarvey then kicked the board into his back a third time. McCarvey then pulled out of what insiders may refer to as a blade, and proceeded to carve up Rusty's forehead something fierce, leaving the people bleeding count currently at three. Oh, I tell you, I've never been so captivated with the story. Going unnoticed, Siege attempted to sneak up behind Henson and Yakuza, but was spotted too soon, and he quickly made his way out of not only the ring, but the entire building. Henson and Yakuza followed in hot pursuit. They, in turn, were followed by McFly and Rusty, a brawl erupted near a white pickup truck in the parking lot, featuring five of the six members of the match. After some time, the sixth, Daniel Macabe, appeared on top of the truck of all places and proceeded to leap off, throwing caution to the wind, drop-kicking Siege on the far side of the brawl, along the lines of boxing great Larry Holmes. Look it up, children. What with your iPods and your... The fight... Thankfully, it spilled back into the building as Team's eyes sucks dicks t altogether grabbed a much longer than average 10 foot light tube and whipped Rusty and Siege to the ropes, attempting to clothesline them with said tube. 
The TOH members ducked this attack, but the I Suck Sticks members laid the light tube on the mat and triple shoulder tackled the tube back first onto the tube. As they stood over their opponents, pleased with what they have done, Zeus McFly had procured a second ten-foot light tube and was able to smash it over the backs of all three of his opponents. Oh, amazing. As incapacitated Henson and Yakuza were rolled onto the table set up on the floor, McFly choked Henson, nearly lifeless, and then moved onto Yakuza, but took too much time as Yakuza turned the tables, literally, and laid McFly out on the table. Rusty attempted to thwart Yakuza's plans, but was met with a saw to the head for his troubles. McFly, however, did get off the table, only to be met with a fireball as Yakuza J apparently had his bases covered. Daniel Maccabi and Siege, meanwhile, were fighting in the ring, with Siege getting the advance and, in fact, dragging Maccabi from the top rope... Oh, what a page turner! ...up to the balcony via a bull rope. They struggled on the balcony for a minute until a very prone Scott Henson was spotted by Siege on a table down below. Siege left the fight with Daniel Maccabi and prepared to hit his signature Swanton from the balcony. Maccabi, not to be outdone, saw what Siege was up to and lined himself with the second table on the floor, containing a slightly charred Zeus McFly. In near perfect unison, Siege and Daniel Maccabi performed a swanton and diving senton, respectively, from the 15 foot balcony onto their opponents on tables below in a fairly spectacular sight. The two people not involved in this debacle, Yakuza J and Rusty, re-entered the ring and attempted to put each other through the second barbed wire board in the corner. Yakuza got the better of it and was able to German suplex poor Rusty through the board. That wasn't the end of things, though, as Yakuza applied a half-angle, half-Boston crab with Rusty, still tangled in the barbed wire, giving him no option but to submit, and thus giving us our first elimination. Siege then makes it back to the ring, only to be stopped in his tracks by Yakuza, who is then joined by Scott Henson as the two hit a double beal through the third and final barbed wire board. Zeus McFly, who can stand to see no more, enters the ring and proceeds to beat the stuffing and, or tar, out of Scott Henson with a steel chair. Henson rolled to the floor to safety, or so he thought, as McFly climbed to the top rope and did his now infamous legs first chair drop from there to the floor onto Henson. When we next saw Henson, he had entered the gentleman bleeding from the head club, perhaps for the first time in his storied career. This left McFly and Yakuza alone in the ring, and when in this case they are required by law, I may add, to exchange punches. McFly actually got the better of this exchange, that is until Yakuza emerged wearing the Stinger glove, wrapped in barbed wire. After absorbing a punch, McFly tried another punch, only to be caught in midair by a barbed wire wrapped hand of Yakuza J. Yakuza was then able to punch McFly mercilessly with his free, also weaponized hand. Mr. J then attempted to choke slam with the same hand, but McFly, being the crafty devil he is, was able to reverse the attempt into a hurricane bar. Siege then made his way into the ring, bearing gifts. The first being a light tube shot for Yakuza, the second being another one delivered by McFly, the third being a thumbtack bat shot directly to the chest. Yakuza somehow summoned all powers, holy and unholy alike, to fire up from this attack. But unfortunately, it was immediately met with a powerbomb by Zeus McFly onto a bag of 1,000 thumbs that McFly had spilled out onto the mat below. This, my friends, was elimination number two. This leaves a two-on-two standoff between the remaining competitors. As soon as the punches started flying, Siege essentially bailed, leaving Zeus McFly on his own. Gaining the advantage, Henson and Maccabe set up the TOH chair, decorated with a thumbtack phallus. After teasing a double suplex onto this monstrosity, they decided to go another route as they pulled his trousers down and double atomic dropped his bare bottom and bare bald McFly onto a modified chair. Oh, oh, oh those rascals. <laughs> Siege returned to the fray at this point, getting Maccabi and Henson's attention from the apron. 
He attempted to fight both at the same time, which proved foolish as they took advantage. Met him out on the apron and performed their rarely seen excommunication off the top apron to the floor through a table that had been ascended with a multitude of fluorescent light tubes. A multitude, if you will. At this point, Danny Macabre returned to the ring, brandishing a handful of light tubes, only to be met with a hammer-wielding Zeus McFly, and in what turned out to be a perverse version of rock, paper, scissors. Hammer beats light tubes, in case you don't know. What followed was a concentrated assault by McFly and Macabre's nether regions, consisting of his patented Dingaplex, Utilizing the aforementioned hammer instead of the typical fist, as well as a diving headbutt from the top rope to Danny Macabre's already weakened genitals as they lay prone, buried in a pile of light tubes. Hoping to return to the fray as the proverbial house on fire, Scott Henson entered the ring only to be met by the cagey McFly still wielding the hammer, not unlike Thor of Norse myth. McFly then took this opportunity to place Henson in his feared camel clutch as he was able to take his patented submission to a new level of pain involving the hammer, Henson was able to escape up the rear, acquiring the hammer in the process and holding it tightly to his forearm. Deliver a near knock a roaring elbow like blow to the base of Zeus McFly's neck. What came next can only be described as a truly literal description of Kenta Gobashi's famous burning hammer. On to... a burning hammer. No, seriously. The hammer was on fire. This was finally enough to do away with the I Sucks Dick's turncoat, dispatch once and for all, and leaving the match a two-on-one advantage in favor of the whole team. Siege looked to put an end to this advantage following a miscommunication between Henson and Makabe. Focusing his attention towards Henson, first delivering an exploded suplex onto an open chair, following up by putting an end to whatever momentum a surprisingly rejuvenated Henson appeared to possess, with a series of STOs and a vicious swanton bomb from the top rope onto a prone Henson, held beneath a barbed wire board. It was at this point that Henson could take no more, and the teams were back at even strength. Having set up a table on the floor, Makabe sprung back into action, attempting to catch Siege off guard. Following a valiant battle where it appeared that either mag could potentially go crashing oh, from the top rope to the floor through the table. It was Makabe who found himself lying there and staring up as Siege came off the top like a phoenix rising from the ashes and delivered his crushing double knee drop, aided by not one but multiple light tubes fastened together to create some sort of super tube. Frustrated his inability to finish, even with such a maneuver, Siege attempted to once again dive off something high onto someone low, laying prone on a piece of furniture, or, in this case, two pieces of furniture. Tables to be exact. Not one to be caught lying down, Makabe joined Siege upon the ten-foot-high scaffolding and put an end to any thought of Siege diving upon him like a hawk swooping down upon a young child. By superplexing off the top of the scaffold! Both men came crashing through the tables below, and yet still this was not enough to finish the match either. Oh. Having entered the fray with it in hand, Makabe now found it to be the appropriate moment to utilize his guitar. Emblazoned with the same text Dan Makabe had sent into the opt section of the New York Times, simply put, Fuck Siege. Unsuccessful in his attempts to simply batter him across the skull with it, Makabe was able to contact upon his midsection and followed up by delivering his world-renowned Trapper Keeper Bomb. Having kicked out, Makabe followed up by locking Siege in his newly acclaimed signature abdominal stretch, which characteristic of his never-say-died attitude, Siege refused to submit to. It was at this point that Makabe hearkened back to the both the previous day's altercation as well as Siege's entry in that very match where the Ontario native took it upon himself to grunge him atop the head with a thumbtack embedded bat. Figuring what's good for the goose is, well, good for the gander, Makabe took it upon himself to channel his rage through one good stroke of the bat, exiting through Siege's head, leaving him a helpless pile on the mat. Tensing that Siege would once more refuse to quit, Makabe instructed him to STRAY DOWN, MOTHERFUCKER! At which point, Siege had no choice but in fact to stay down for the counts one, two, and three! If you've been paying attention, you'll find that Tanner Makabe is now the only man left in this match, thereby winning this epic battle for Team I Sucks Dicks, for Queen and for Country, and for Freedom itself. 
I thank you for joining me. I have been your host, Professor Henry Applegate, and I bid you adieu. Would you like to smell like me? Well, now you can, with Old Spice. I'm not on the horse. Oh, hey everybody. Danny McCabe here with just a little bit of a footnote here on the end of uh, Dream Slam 2 Day 2. Um, as you can probably tell, uh, we didn't in fact write War and Peace. What you did hear, however, was the match that was planned and was scheduled to happen, unfortunately, very early on in the match. Uh, Rusty did injure himself um, with a moonsault to the floor, which you probably saw. Um, and you'll probably see his leg right about now. There you go. Yeah, not so nice. Um, so, you know, we did what we had to do, and the match stopped. Um, but, you know, it, unfortunate that it came to that. Um, and hopefully one day, you know, I or I Sucks Dicks or whoever can take on Siege and maybe Rusty, I don't know. You know, a, a match of, of that ilk is the wrong word, but... You know, a match of that magnitude, really. I mean, who would have thought a match like that would ever happen? And, and it was supposed to happen. And as you heard, as described by our good friend, Professor Applebottom, uh, you know, it was going to really go down. So uh, I'd like to thank you again for watching Dream Slam 2. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you at the matches.